Hello everyone, this is Prem Kumar. Welcome to this video on error handling in service rest. In the last few videos, we created our own service rest using the get method as well as the post method. We never implemented any kind of error handling. So in this video, we will complete it totally. We will do all types of error handling. I'm here to promote my video course, the Pega master class, which is already live in Udemy as well as my own self hosting platform. There are many students actively learning with my course material. If you are a fresher beginner or an intermediate, or if you are preparing for some interviews, definitely my course can help you with the preparation because in the course I have covered almost everything like from the basics to all the advanced level. And the course material will also be periodically updated with some new topics. And finally, you will have a nice Q&A session where you can raise some questions based on the course material and I will be there to answer or clear your doubt. Currently, some discount program is running. If you want to find the discounts, please visit the links in the description of this video where I have provided the discount links for both the Udemy as well as the self-hosting platform. You can always visit the link to find the entire course content. So I would say do not miss it. You can enroll at the earliest possible. First, let's recall how we did the error handling for the service soap. Service soap is a standard protocol. It uses the fault elements, the out of the box or the inbuilt fault elements, which holds all the fault summary details. So what about the rest service? In rest service, we can use the HTTP code to handle the errors. Since REST service use HTTP, it can get the HTTP response code back. There can be different sets of HTTP response codes which you can set from the service REST. The engine code by default sets some kind of standard response codes. For example, 200 you will always get when there is some success and 401 you will always get when there is some kind of authentication error. And 500 you will get maybe mostly for the remaining errors if the server down or different different errors can contribute to the 500. So these can be the main three standard error codes which you can get but you can very well handle the error on your own and you can set or update the HTTP error codes. So in this video I'm going to show you what are the error codes you can set, how you can customize it and how you can set your own error codes. Let's get started. So here I'm going to start with the postman. And I have two tabs open, one for the get method and the other for the post method. And currently both are giving me the right values. You can see the get method, it is executing successfully. It is returning me the fraud details. And the post method, if I send, I get the case ID back. The last created case ID is 6016. Both are working perfectly fine in the happy path scenario. Now let's first test some inbuilt error handling. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable the authentication. So if I disable the authentication, definitely it should respond me with 401 error code. As you can see, the previous error code is 200, which is for the success. Now, if I send, you can note that we got the error code 401. So 401 is unauthorized. So the consumer or the connector can do the error handling from their side that if they don't receive the code of 200, they can always consider it kind of an error. Okay, now we got 401 error. Let's also do another check. If I go to the post method and there, if I just play around with this data, I just add some, some kind of junk data. So this also should return me error. Let's check. You see here, it's a bad request. So we are getting some kind of error back. So it is not that it always returns some 200 or something. It is returning us a different errors out of the box. We didn't do any kind of error handling. So service rest can inbuilt do some kind of error handling. But it is always nice that you add your own error handling. Let's check that first. So where can we do the error handling? Let's open the service rest rule. I already opened the two service rest rules here. The one which you are seeing is the fraud details where we use the get method. So I'm into the get method here. If I go to the response tab and there where we configure the response conditions, we can add multiple conditions and then we can say what type of error codes we can set. As you can see, this is the default error code. When everything goes successful, we always set code to 200. Let's check what are the available error codes we can get. If you just remove it, you see, you can set different codes and they also give some kind of tool tip to us saying that what type of error codes you can use for which scenarios. One is always informational, two is always kind of a success. 
3 is redirection, 4 is client error and 5 is server error. So client error and server error are two main error configurations. If the client data is wrong, if there is some issues with the client who is sending the data, then we can send in the range of 400. If there is some issue with our side, then we can send in the range of 500. If there is a successful scenario, we can always send in the range of 200. 200 is the default one but you can also do send other kind of HTTP codes that are part of the range 200. Okay now first question how can you add multiple conditions here very well you can add from here you can add add response condition first let's check what are the conditions we can have default so when all the when condition evaluates to false and then you can have the default condition mostly we will send it as success code 200. Next you can have a when condition and with the when condition you can send different kinds of HTTP code. So if case is created or if case is not created, so you can have your own when rule and then you decide what type of HTTP code you can send and then Q when. So Q when you can use when there is some kind of lock issue. If you are doing some update to a case and if there is some lock issue which you found, then you can always queue it. So you can have a when condition checking if there is lock error found, then we can queue the instance and then we can respond to them with some HTTP status code saying that the case is not updated or case is not created. You can say it as like a 200 series. If you look at the 200 series, you will find something like maybe you can say accepted or you can say partial content. You give them the Q item ID and then they can pull back at a later point of time. This error handling you can always do. We also saw the same kind of error handling in the service SOAP also. And then mapping error, security error, service error, we already know. If there is some kind of mapping error, we can always set it. If there is some kind of security error, we can do it. And we already saw for the security error, we always get the 401. But if you want to change the status code, you can very well do it. But I would recommend not to do that. But instead, what you can do is you can also add some kind of header. I'll show you. Let me put a header here. Error message. So this is the header. And I'm going to say constant. And the value I'm going to say authentication fail. I'm just giving my name just to show you. So this is the message which I'm setting in the header whenever there is a security error, the 401 error for the fraud details. Okay, now I'm going to save this. Once you do the change, make sure you check in the rule. Now I have checked in the rule. Now if you go to Postman and make sure you use no auth and then click send. You should see your header here. As you can see the error message, the header which we set authentication failed frame. So what you identify here is like if you have some kind of condition, you can also add your own header or you can also add your own message data. I would recommend not to use header because if you use header, you should use it in all conditions. Otherwise, the consumer may find it difficult to really understand. So I would recommend you the best practice for the consumer is to always use the HTTP status code. They can use this HTTP status code to easily identify what went wrong. If the HTTP status code is not 200, definitely something went wrong, then they can do the error handling. They can capture the error message maybe. If we send it in the body, then they can do their own kind of error handling. So these are all about the different conditions which you can use. Now I want to use one condition. So how I'm going to use the condition is like, if I open this activity, the get fraud details, let's say the different application, they send a customer ID and that customer ID does not exist in the system. Now I have reverted everything back from my business studio. Now if I go to this get fraud detail service and if I give a valid name, I'm definitely going to get the response. As you can see, I got a valid response. Now if I give a name, a customer that doesn't exist in the system or he doesn't have any kind of fraudulent details. Now if I click a send here, what it does is it is giving me empty, but the status code is still 200. What I could have done as a service provider is I could have sent a different status code here instead of 200 I could have sent maybe a different number so that consumer know that this is not a expected one. Okay now let's talk about this business requirement. Do we expect that all customer will have the fraudulent details? Definitely not right. So this is again a accepted business requirement. The other application all it does is it is just checking if there is some kind of fraudulent details or not. So what we could have done is we could have added some kind of boolean property saying that is fraud check is true or false. If we could have done that we could have used the same kind of response code the 200 response code. But now let's see how we can send a different response code for this number. If the customer does not exist in our system or if the customer don't have any fraud details 
we may need to send a different status code. Now let's go to the Designer Studio. And here under the get you have a condition. This is the default condition. So this is going to send every time. Now let's add one more condition here. Add a response condition. And there we need to identify if the customer does not exist. So how to identify? We need to do that in the activity. So let's go to the activity first. Get fraud details. And in that activity what I'm going to do is if I call this service I get some kind of step page error. I'll show you again. Just trace it and then hit it from the postman. Now if you look at the tracer you will find that there is some kind of step page error. So this is what we have to capture. You see there is a one message on the step page. So how I am going to do the error handling in the activity is I will go to the activity great for details and then in the jump step I am going to use a when rule has messages. So this when rule what it does as you can see it just check if the step page has message or not. So I am going to say this will be the right when rule. So if it is true I am going to continue otherwise I am going to jump to a later step. I will configure the step. I am just going to say the step as end for now and then do a submit. So I have to add two steps here. One will be the end step. It is like kind of a success step. Otherwise I continue and set a property here. So what I am going to try here is I'm going to set some py node for now. Just I'll set it on the py node. I'll say it as error. So when this becomes error, whenever this data page returns false or whenever this data page has some kind of error, then we have this property value. The py node property value will be set to error. Now I'm going to do a check in of this activity. So my service activity is now good. It can return me the error. Now all I have to do is in the method, I have to check out first and then add a response condition using the when rule. So I go to response here and then I'm going to add a response condition and that is going to use a when rule and let's create a new when rule that is going to check the py node property and remember that this py node property is directly on the primary page. So there is no problem we didn't embed it into the request or response page. So there is no issues I'm just going to check is status error. And let me quickly create the when rule. So this when rule will evaluate to true whenever the py note is error and that is what we said from this activity. So now let's go back to the fraud detail service rest and then use the when rule here. It's going to check is status error. When it is true then I'm going to return the status code as 204. I don't want to send any message for that I'm just going to send only the status code because there is no details no fraud details so I'm not going to send any kind of response. Now if I do a check in here and then if I execute from postman for the same customer who don't have any fraud watch list let's check the error code you see here now we got the 204 no content. So we have our custom HTTP code that can help the consumer to identify that there is some kind of error processing. This is actually not the error processing but they can identify the not the happy path but the other path they can easily identify. Okay this is one way of error handling for this service. Let me quickly do an error handling for the other service where we created a new case. Here if you see under the method we have the post method and under the post method we create new clients records from this activity. And if you look at this response currently we didn't do any error handling we always get the 200 error code. Now I'm going to use the constraint validation which we used in one of the video. We have a constraint rule that validates if the policy number is not starting with P hyphen. I hope you remember that during the decision video we created a new constraint rule. And if I look at this constraint as you can see the policy number constraint. What is the constraint is policy number should always start with P hyphen. If it doesn't start with P hyphen then that is going to be some error right. Now I'm going to catch the error. Let's trace this session. I'm going to start the tracer and go to the postman. Go to the post method. Give a valid thing. Now first do a send. Let's see if the case is getting created. Case is getting created 6017. Now instead of p hyphen I'm going to say a hyphen. So definitely the constraint the validation should fire that fires at the back end also. Now if you do a send let's check. We didn't get the case ID right. So case is not created. Now if I go to the tracer there I find there is an error on the work page the step page. Let's check there is one message on this page not a valid policy number. So as you can easily see 
there is some kind of error happening we can catch the message same like how we did for the previous service rest and we can send a different error code let's quickly do that so first i'm going to this activity and here i need to do the error handling in the transition if it has some kind of message how i'm going to do is i'm going to do the exact same thing i'm going to check for has messages i'll say has messages then i will continue otherwise i'll jump to later step i'll say no error here and then i'll jump to here so no error i will always go to the happy path here i will set the case id and the status case created i will continue otherwise i go to the third step where i'm going to set a property here i'm going to set the property as the same response property i'm going to use so i'm going to use this property status and then i'm going to say error so my when rule at the end it needs to validate this property okay and then in the jump you can always jump because you don't want to execute the fourth step so i will say always exit activity now do a save so this will have the error if there is some kind of validation let's quickly verify that if you go to the tracer just clear it off go to the postman you find the case is not created you have the status as error now because error is the response which we are getting back but still you have the status code as 200 you have to update it so it's easy to update you go back here go to the service and from here you can just add a response condition and then you can use a when rule and that when rule you can say is error here create a new when rule and in the when rule you can validate the condition you can say if this is error i'm just quickly creating because we already saw the same thing in the previous service records so i'm just quickly creating it i have created here then i go back to the service rest and here i'm not going to set 200 here because this is a error from the client side because client gave me a different or a invalid policy number i have to let client know that there is some error right so i'm going to use the 400 error code so let me check what can be the right error code for 400 i can say not acceptable or i can say bad request because request is definitely bad that is not a valid request because the policy number doesn't start with p hyphen so i'm going to give 400 back to them let's check in this now if you go to postman and then do a test let's see you see 400 bad request because policy number is not good we didn't create any case for this so this is how you can do the error handling you can do the error handling in the service activity and then you can use the response condition from the service rest to let the consumers know that there is different kind of error you can always use this http status codes that is the key criteria please use the http status code and inform your consumer that so this is going to be the right error handling attribute which they can also use so i hope now you are a bit clear with how to do error handling for service so we have the fault summary elements and for service rest we have the http status codes in the next video i'm going to quickly explain some of the out of the box apis which we can use for the exact scenarios which we did till now i'll see you in the next video